Oh boy, ISIS on the march again, this time they're near the Turkish border. Okay, now they haven't crossed that border. They're uh, trying to capture a Kurdish town uh, at the edge of the Turkish-Syrian border. Uh, border. It's called Kobani. Um, the Arabs have a different name for it. Uh, I think it's Ayan al-Arab. And uh, over 400 people have already died. It's interesting, we're doing, the U.S. is doing bombings uh, to make sure they don't capture the town. But it's not working. Now, they haven't captured the whole town yet. Uh, and they captured apparently the southwestern end of the town. Uh, and then they hung some ISIS flags, you know, the black and white flags that you've seen, right? That you see in the picture here. Um, and so the U.S. bombed that building. <laughs> I don't know if it was literally a false flag operation where, uh, that they put the flags on a different building, but if it was a, their building that they put the flag on, not a good idea. Okay. Nonetheless, we haven't been able to stop them. Now, Turkey is saying, we see you, because they literally see them. This is like a Sarah Palin moment. From their porch in Turkey, they can see the ISIS flags flying. Now, Turkey's second largest army in NATO, you probably don't want to cross that border, okay? Uh, but so far they haven't, so Turkey's saying, look, we're beseeching uh, the U.S. to get more involved. You want us to get more involved, and our uh, parliament just voted to say, yes, we will get more involved, but you got to show up here. You want our bo boots on the ground, where's your boots on the ground, okay? It's a fair question. Now, being an American, I don't want our boots on the ground. So that's the conundrum that we're in. Now. How are these guys sustaining themselves? Well, uh, it turns out uh, that they have many different uh, ways of making money. Now, some of this we already know. You know that they've captured some oil fields and they make money by selling the oil. But now you wonder, who buys oil from ISIS? Well, it turns out that when you read further into it, and CNN actually had a very good article on this, um, uh, it turns out the answer is almost everybody. Why? For example, in Turkey, uh, a gallon of gas is $7.50. So when somebody comes down the street and says, I give it to you for five bucks, they buy it. <laughs> okay, they don't ask any questions. Now, I'm, I'm overgeneralizing and simplifying a little bit, but that is in essence what's happening here, right? And so that's one way of my, making money. We also know that uh, they've got some rich uh, financiers in the Middle East who believe in Wahhabism and radical fundamentalist Islam. So they send them millions of dollars. But now that's what Al-Qaeda said are dependent on. But these guys, since they control land and territory, are not strictly reliant on that. That's why they're actually richer than Al-Qaeda or any other terrorist group that's come up before. The um, oil makes them about one to two million dollars uh, a day, a day, okay? But even if you're on the lower end of that, as some people suspect, a little, little over a million dollars. But they also have wheat and other farmland and products and sometimes they just smuggle those, sell those. But what they do in general, and this is fascinating, is that they tax the local population. So no matter what you're doing, tax. You want to go over the bridge, tax. You want to go uh, grow wheat on your land, tax. Okay. If you're going to withdraw money from your bank account, ICE is going to take a piece of it. You want to complain about it? Nah, I didn't think so, right? And they have an extortion racket, and a lot of these guys were a former Saddam, uh, you know, some were generals, but obviously a lot of them were just former military under Saddam, and they don't really care, ISIS, Islam, uh, Saddam was secular, they don't care about that at all. They're just like, where's the money, Lebowski? So they became this enormous organized crime racket in Iraq. Now that they're in parts of Iraq and Syria and they control the ground, uh, they have no one to oppose them. It's not like the cops can come in and say, hey, cut that extortion out or a kidnapping racket. In Syria, they just kidnapped 20 Christians and so they hold them for ransom. Some people don't pay the ransom and then we see what happens in the videos and some people do pay the ransom, they pay handsomely. So they've got all these different revenue streams. But it, CNN talks about it like it's almost like a tech company. They're like, but they're, on the other hand, they also have a significant burn rate meaning that they're spending a lot of money on weapons, the economy, paying their soldiers, those are real concerns that they have. But they have a renewable source of revenue in the people, that the, uh, in the areas that they control, because they're taxing the living, living hell out of them. Maybe in this case quite literally, right? So until you get in there and uproot them from actually controlling that territory, they're going to continue to have that money. Uh, it's, those are all very inconvenient facts for us. I don't want ground troops. Um, and you know, there's a lot in there that I, I wish weren't the case, but it is the case. And you got to know your enemy before you can figure out how to beat them.